Yep, looks good to me. Run it. Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, I've got an opportunity to teach you something today. Uh, it's probably going to be strictly on the board. I'm not going to go out of the shop and do it. There's really no point because it's a mechanic thing. It is a method by which you can take a part and put something on that part that allows you to move the part around in space. And this will make sense in a second, so hang in there. Uh, specifically what I'm referring to is my wooden steam engine chassis that I have out in the shop and the bearing journals on it. I watched a comedy this weekend and kind of made me cry, so I figured I owed it to the machining community to put you on the right track. Get it? Steam engine, right track. I'm here all week. All right. I can't make this part any easier than it is right here. And before I go any further, before everybody clicks off and thumbs down and blasts me for subliminal reasons behind this video, I have to give a lot of credit to anybody with limited experience that would try a feature like this because this is not an easy feature by any stretch of the imagination. So to, to even go at it and just come up with something and try to attack it, kudos, good job. Not easy to do. What they do is they come up with this fantastic design and then they dimension it with the total disregard of, hey, you can't do that because that's dimensioned off of this and this doesn't exist yet. And that's exactly what takes place here. When you're trying to machine this casting, a lot of the dimensions given for a pre-assembly, let's put everything together and then put this hole in, it's all relative to a surface that is dimensioned from the hole that's not there yet. So it's, a, it's one of those, you know, okay, where, how do I start? What do I do first? I'm going to show you a trick on how to do that. There's actually a couple of different ways to do that. And you don't need a side plate, you don't need a side bar, you don't need a tilty table, you don't need anything fancy. All you need to do is be able to hold the part however you can hold it. You want to strap a one, two, three block and use angle blocks and a vise? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Just make sure you have an indicator ready. Now here's what I'm saying. We're looking at a cross section, a very simplified, really sad cross section of this particular casting. Okay, and this could be any part anywhere. I'm going to tell you two different ways that you can find this theoretical point in space. You have on the print, you have a finished surface on the end, which is a spot face, which should be there before you attempt all of this stuff, since it's a reference surface. You're not working back in time. You're, you have all these dimensions up here, so by evaluating the print that you're looking at, you can pretty much come up with a game plan which dimensions to hit first. Just watch the way they stack up and, and where they point to. So here's the one in question, and it's a lot easier than you may think. If you have a finished surface here, wonderful. If you do not, you can put in what I call a witness surface. You can take an end mill and you can run an end mill across this surface and stay a thousandths, two thousandths away from where you want to be so that when you flip it up to do that surface, you know that when your tool comes in contact with that surface that you are right where you want to be. Chances are within a thousandth of an inch or two, depending on how aggressive you are when you get there. Okay? You, but let's just assume that surface is already done. You have the dimension on the print, you have the angle, you know that the center line of that hole is X from this surface right here, or however you know where that center line is, but you know where the center line is because the hole's in there because it came in from this side. I had to do that. Alright, simple way to do this. First and foremost, you know the diameter of the hole. You know it. Right? It's on the print. 375 is the diameter of that hole. So you have 187 to work with from here to here. 187 thousandths at 45 degrees because that is right here. And I'll bet a lot of you just forehead to the palm, palm to the forehead, and said, I know exactly where he's going with this. As luck would have it, since this is a 45 degree angle, this point has the same relation to center as this point, as this point, and this point out here. It's a square. Now, when you have a square and you have a cutter that's standing up like this, 
it is a lot easier to make that square. What you do, you find the center line of that tool. You can put a pin in here, register your tool against the pin. If you know the height, if you know the height from the bottom up, whatever. You're going to have to do some homework on this. This isn't going to just jump off the page and say, okay, well, here we are. This is the solution. Position your cutter within the confines of that notch and make a notch in your part. Can you see it? When you turn your part 45 degrees, once you start doing or looking for or trying to establish all of these other features and surfaces, you have a V-block. Simple. You now have a perfect 45 degree trough in your part that you can sit a pin in. And when you indicate either side of that pin, you are right here. When you find the top of that pin, you know how far to go to find the center. Bulletproof. Absolutely bulletproof. You will translate that theoretical point in space to whatever part you want to do with a little bit of geometry and a little bit of trig, you are there. Now here's the other handy dandy trick. I believe on a 375, I think it's 136, don't quote me on that, but I think this triangle right here works out to be a 136 window of opportunity. Let's say, easy, use an easy number, use a hundred thousandths of an inch. If this is a hundred, then this needs to be 100 if you want to maintain a 45 degree trajectory. And then when you flip the part up, the distance from the top of the pin to the center line is also going to be 100. It doesn't get any easier than that. Once you've found the center of the pin, once you know the height, you can drop down, you can set your tool. All of these dimensions on this end feature are symmetrical about this center line. So finding that center line is critical. Do not use that corner with the caliper and scratch a line on it and wing it. It's not on the print. This is on the print, right there. Register the edge, find the center, know what size your cutter is, drop a notch in. When the part rotates to 45 degrees, pin in the notch, you are home. You're going to hit that all day long and it's going to be the most accurate feature on this thing from what I've seen. Second way to do that, if you can reach it, would be to put a tooling ball in here. When you throw the piece up at an angle, if you can reach it, you then have a spherical surface that you can track and you can do your math this way. You'll know the zero, you can come up and over, or you can go over and up and find that tooling ball, tooling notch. If you are going to use the tooling notch, you're going to say, well, I don't know, this drill's going to kind of grab it. Plunge an end mill through it. Go with an undersized end mill, pick the size pin that you want. If you're going to use a 200 pin, use a 250 end mill to plunge, followed by your 3 8 or your reamer or your drill or whatever you need to do to prepare that hole for the reaming or boring operation. Notch is the way to go guys, tooling ball is the way to go, two different options, everything works back from that hole right there. Do not machine that surface until you're ready to roll with all the other stuff. But it is a very, very chicken or the egg kind of feature that you can't, you can't reference one to the other because the one that you need to reference from is the one that you're preparing to do and one's not there, and you're going to look at it and go, I don't know where to start. So keep that in mind. Put that little notch in there. You've got a V-block, lay the pin, track it, indicator. Done. Sounds simple, doesn't it? <laughs> where do you try it? It's, it's a legit, legit way to do it. It will absolutely serve you well, but it looks a lot easier on the board and during this video than it's actually going to be when you get out to the machine. Anyway, figured I'd give you an option. Figured I'd put you back on track. Do not use that corner. Don't do it. Wrong. It's not on the print. Find that point. Work from there.
thank you for humoring me on this one. It's just something I felt I needed to provide for you. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're well. Joe Pine, Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.